Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here, and I, I may have made a few mistakes because we're just a few days away from MacBook Pro shipping, and I just saw a plethora of leaks of not only benchmark performance on the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, but also hands-on videos as well. And I'm starting to think I may have picked the wrong option because there's a lot of information about these devices that quite frankly, Apple failed to disclose at their event. All right, so first of all, let's cover some of these hands-on videos because this is the first time we're seeing just how much of a change these uh, MacBook Pros look design-wise in a real video. The 14-inch is much more squared off and definitely is giving off design vibes of an older MacBook Pro design, which is kind of what Apple has been going for in its recent designs with a return to some older design aesthetics blended into these modern form factors. You can also see just how much bigger that 14-inch display is when you compare it against the old 13-inch display. And based on these photos, it looks like you're getting a sizable upgrade to screen real estate with the screen being even taller than the old 13-inch model. Of course, that also means a slight trade-off in the form factor because these MacBook Pros will have a slightly bigger physical footprint than the ones they are replacing. And obviously, they're also a little bit heavier. Now, we also have a full leaked video of the 16-inch MacBook Pro from Sang Sang Suit. I hope I said that right. Um, he got the MacBook Pro days early. Like what kind of ordering mishap do I have to do at Apple to unlock this cheat code to get a MacBook Pro order sent to me early? Like, is there like a secret combination on the website? Anyway, he has a hands-on of the 16-inch model, giving us a pretty good look at the physical changes to the 16-inch model, including the thickness increase between older models and the expanded port array on the sides of these laptops. The most interesting thing to me based on this video is how much thicker the display lid looks on the 16-inch Pro. I think that display thickness increase could be there for the new mini LED display, because that actually made the 12.9-inch iPad Pro thicker, and that thicker lid could also be necessary for Apple to fit in that better quality 1080p webcam. We also get a look at the expanded 6.2 inch display size and I am really starting to think I should have bought the 16 inch model uh, for myself because that display is looking really nice in these videos. And I may be starting to regret my 14 inch purchase in more ways than one because over the week we have learned that the 16 inch may have a performance increase over the 14 inch model. We didn't know that at the time, but because the 16 inch MacBook Pro apparently has a exclusive high power mode when you spec it out with the M1 Max chip and it won't be available on the 14 inch model. There is no high performance mode on the 14 inch model. Now this high power mode is described as a mode that could enable a performance boost for a period of time. And apparently this will happen by turning up the fans max on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. So that will probably mean it will also drain the battery faster. And it probably explains why the max version of the 16 inch MacBook Pro actually weighs 0.1 pounds heavier than the M1 Pro model. And this may be an increase in size on the heatsink or another component we really don't know for sure about uh, that could help with some of the thermals but I guess we won't find that out until we get a, a MacBook Pro teardown video. And honestly, I'm kind of a little bit peeved at Apple for not revealing the 16 inch model would have this exclusive high power mode because I think it actually might've swayed me into ordering the bigger 16 inch model for myself. I mean, I just feel like with the 14 inch model now, I may not be able to eke out every last bit of metric performance with that 32 core max GPU. However, I should also probably acknowledge that these high power modes might not make that much of a difference for what I do and, and truly just could be like an insane mode for the most edge case computing performance scenarios. And it's also likely, even if this was an option on the 14 inch model, there's a possibility I would never enable it because the increase in fan speed. One of the things I really have come to appreciate after using the M1 Max for the past year is how little fan noise they make. I love having a quiet machine and if high power mode means I hear the fans running at max speed uh, just for a little bit of extra performance, I might not even need at that point. Well, I don't think I would actually make that trade off, but it's actually a good option for the people that do need it. Either way, as prospective buyers of this MacBook Pro, I think it's really something you should be made aware of. And in my last video, we had a lot of open questions on whether or not the 16 inch model would outperform the 14 inch model. And I think it's safe to assume at this point, uh, you know, the 16 inch model is gonna outperform the 14 inch model 
especially when using that high power mode. Now, speaking of performance, these MacBook Pros must be in the hands of some reviewers out there uh, because we're now starting to see leaked Geekbench scores of some different configurations. First of all, let's look at this CPU benchmark from Geekbench where we can see the MacBook Pro is scoring a 1750 on the single core score and a 12,157 on the multi-core score. And this multi-core performance is basically the performance we were looking for out of these new M1 Pro and M1 Max chips in terms of CPU performance. For reference, this is more powerful than a 12-core Xeon Mac Pro chip and much faster than the previous generations of Mac Pros. Now, we don't know what model posted these scores and if they were taken shortly after setup, which means you know, that would be reduced performance because the computer is still kind of setting up in the background. So it's possible we could see even higher scores depending on the model and methodology of this test. But either way, these are really impressive results. These are laptops that are now getting a similar or quite frankly, better CPU performance than a full desktop Mac Pro with a 12 core Xeon CPU. And like I said before, it's possible we could see even higher CPU performance if we're running the same benchmark on high power mode on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Furthermore, we also have some leaked GPU benchmarks on both the M1 Pro and M1 Max, giving us our first real world benchmarking tests of the differences between both chips. And it looks like the M1 Pro with a 16 core GPU is seeing around 41,914 on a metal score and 36,664 on an OpenCL score. And we also have a leaked benchmark with a 68,870 metal score, which I presume is for the faster M1 Max chip, but this benchmark isn't clear on whether that's the 24 core GPU or the 32 core GPU, which does raise some questions because this score is not the same power as a 3080, which Apple said, uh, you know, the M1 Max wouldn't beat, but it would have been closer to. So we'll have to wait and see, I guess. Either way, in terms of Mac laptop GPU performance, uh, these are huge jumps in performance to what we previously had. So for example, with the M1 Max, we're seeing 62% faster performance than the discrete graphics card that came with the 2019 60 inch MacBook Pro. And it's three times faster than the M1 chip. So not only is that a huge jump on the biggest 16 inch model, it's also a crazy jump on the 14 inch model because previously the 13 inch MacBook Pro was limited to a wimpy internal Intel GPU. So either way, this kind of proves that even if Apple falls short on its performance claims in the GPU department, at least these options are still a lot better than the AMD laptop options we got on the previous MacBook Pros. And it shows that even for the first generation Pro graphics chip that Apple is delivering here, uh, we're getting some pretty good performance and probably some crazy performance per watt. And after seeing all these leaks and all these hands-on videos, honestly, I am even more excited than I have been before because it, it makes me realize in just a few days, we're finally getting crazy fast desktop performance on a laptop with an energy efficient design. That means you'll be able to actually use these things as laptops rather than a giant gaming laptop that gets like three hours of max battery life. And while I'm slightly questioning going for the 14 inch instead of the 16 inch because I'm just one of those nerds that always wants the best possible option, I think either way, both of these machines are going to end up being crazy powerful. And in real world testing, there could still be little to no difference between both of these models. Obviously that's something we're gonna have to find out when we actually get our hands on these MacBook Pros. And yes, there's still a lot to learn though, because even though we have leaked benchmarks, they're just Geekbench benchmarks, they don't say that much. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel because I plan to benchmark these MacBook Pros and see just how powerful they are. And they're gonna be coming to us very shortly. So if you like this video, be sure to give me a like. If you wanna see more from the channel, again, make sure you're subscribed. If you wanna help the channel out, maybe purchase one of the baseline MacBook Pros. Make sure you check out some of my affiliate links in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are excited for these MacBook Pros as I am. And I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.